Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use local state in Flutterflow. Local state allows you to define variables that you can store on the device, either for that session or ones that can be persisted so that when the user, let's say, restarted their phone, um, that variable is still stored on the device and can be loaded. What we'll do is build a very simple counter application. Uh, and this is like the standard Flutter uh, demo application where there's a simple number that's on the screen and you can use the floating action button to increment it. So let's add the, let's set up the layout here. I'll add a floating action button. I'll give it an icon. <clears throat> that's add here. Let's set the icon color to white. Um, and in the middle of the screen, we can just have the text, which is, um, I'm gonna align this so that it's in the center. This will be the text that just says the current value. Let's make it a larger text. Okay, so this is gonna start out at zero. And so when we tap this button, we want this to increment. <clears throat> so the way we'll do that is first define the variable. So we'll call it count. And here's how you, the local state stuff works. You can add different variables and just be able to access them from the, from the UI builder. So we're going to have a count variable of type integer. And uh, for this first example, let's not store it so that it's every time you refresh it's going to be a reset all right so we have count there and all we need to do is come here on the floating action button here and add an action on top <clears throat> here's we have a lot of options here what we want is update local state we want this like the field to update count and we will increment by value of one and we also want this text to have its value come from this local state. So what, the way we do that is you say set from variable on that text value, local state, count, and that's it. Save. And that's the first uh, step of this tutorial. Let's run it and see how it works. Now, while this is running, I can go quickly into the code and see whether we the code is looking as we expected. So here's the code. There's the app bar. Uh, the floating action button has a on pressed, which is the code for uh, what happens when you press the button. And it's doing a set state set the count to count plus one. So this is looking correct. FF app state is what we um, we use to store the local state. And uh, for the actual text in the middle of the screen here, the value is FF app state dot count dot two string. So as you can see, it's very simple code and it generated it pretty accurately. This, um, this should work. Now let's go back to run mode and confirm. Here we go. So it just says zero here hit plus and just keeps incrementing. Now let's see what happens if I refresh the page. So if I refresh the page, as you notice, now it's gone back down to zero. So this is where persistent state comes in. Now if we go in here, sorry, my puppy's running around in the background. Um, if you go in here and we add a persisted count, variable that's an also an integer and we replace all of the use here so if we make this instead of updating count if it updates persistent count persisted count by one here and if this also comes from persisted count and we hit save here and we'll run it um, <clears throat> and while it runs let's go back to the code again let's see what changed um, so as you can see, nothing in the code has changed other than count being replaced by persisted count. So the code still remains the same. 
all of that magic for the persistence is happening within FF app state. So the code still looks clean here. Um, and we can go back to the run mode and see if it actually works. Okay, here we go. It has finished building. We have the value here. I'm going to hit plus. Commence the value. Now if I refresh, it should still have that same value or app. Six. Cool. And it can resume from there. And as you can see, when you persist it, it stores it locally. So that works on iOS, Android, and also web using um, local storage for web. Cool. Let's look at um, a list type now. We'll do a very simple to-do list. It's going to be a string, and we're going to turn on this list type. Hit create. And the way we'll do it is we'll just have two different pages, one that shows the list and another one that lets us add items to this list. So let's get rid of this. We can make this the list view and we'll have a list tile. We don't need the icon or the subtitle. So I can delete those. And let me give the list some padding. And these can also get some padding. All right, now we want this list view to populate as children from the local state variable. The way you do that is using this generate children dynamically uh, tab view for the property editor. And what we'll use is give it a variable name, to do list items. We'll just call it to do list. The source is local state to do list, right? That's what we want this to populate from and this now warns us this will generate as children dynamically simply edit the first child to see how it looks as you can see now if we make some modification here uh, it affects all the other children right now this is a hard-coded value but what we want is we want this to be the to-do list item which is the item that will come from our local state variable now all we need to do is add an action on top to navigate to the new page. So we'll create a new page. Let's actually just clone this page. Call it add lit add item to the item page. Let's call it that. And instead of the list here, we'll have a text field. Uh, let's give it some styling. Instead of some hint text here, we'll use to do item. Okay, um, now while we, we want this floating action button to, to do two things. We want to add the item that the user has typed here, and then we want to navigate to back to the home page. So we'll do update local state, add to list from variable widget state, and we want that text field to do item. So when we tap it, it selects it, just so you can be sure you have the right one selected. And we'll add another action. We're going to navigate to the home page. Great. Now, back at the home page, we have the different items it should be working. Uh, let's run it and see how it works. Okay, while it's running, let's look at the code and see if it makes sense. Okay, it looks like we have, we forgot to add an action here. Closing the run link. We need to make sure that this navigates to the add to do item page. Let's run it again and look at the code. Okay. So this to-do list um, view 
has the variable and each uh, item in the list view is using this list tile text that has a to-do list item and the add to-do item page is using a floating action button that adds to the to-do list that navigates to the home page that looks good let's see if it runs okay so we have an empty page here because we don't have any list items now when we go to add an item clean car add now we go back we see clean car here random stuff <clears throat> and as you can see this works it lets us add an item and also populate uh, a list from local state thanks for watching